Part 1, Introduction. Environmental injustice has recently been brought to the forefront of national attention with the release of images of indigenous environmental protests that have spread like wildfire throughout social media. Yet, capitalist encroachment on indigenous lands has existed since the conception of America as a nation. The establishment of the Dakota Access Pipeline is, in fact, a modern problem stemming from more than a century's worth of environmental injustices perpetrated against Native Americans. Part 2. Problematic History of the Environmental Movement Two notable environmentalists, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau, were white males who espoused colonialist ideology in their writings on nature and representations of Indians. In his lecture titled Nature, Emerson exalted the great actions of problematic colonial figures like Columbus who forcefully removed Native Americans. He also portrayed colonization as an honorable endeavor. This belief in white supremacy was used as justification for claiming new territory and using natural resources without regard for the detrimental consequences on the lands of Native Americans. For instance, Emerson wrote, quote, nature is thoroughly immediate, it is made to serve, end quote. In this way, the expansion of white civilization into wild tracts of indigenous lands was viewed as a divinely preordained mission by early environmentalists. Thoreau's writing also had racist undertones of colonization. He used environmental discourse with the goal of cultivating the new world through methods superior to the known primitive practices of Indians. In this way, environmental issues became inextricably intertwined with problematic political motives like Manifest Destiny. Part 3, Political Impacts of Environmental Destruction Manifest Destiny was a turning point in the 1840s that used divine providence to justify westward expansion across the North American continent. This idea quickly entered the American consciousness and U.S. policy. In addition to obtaining land through annexation like the Louisiana Purchase, the U.S. also forcefully took lands from Native Americans through numerous treaties which deprived indigenous peoples of the right to their ancestral lands. By 1850, the boundaries of the U.S. territory had extended to the Gulf of Mexico, the Rio Grande, the St. Lawrence, the Great Lakes, and the 49th parallel. Yet, the growth of the country and the economy came at a significant environmental cost. The new settlers had little to no knowledge of the grassland environment that they sought to dominate. The land was damaged as settlers cut and burned the grass and polluted the rivers while settling, farming, and ranching. As a result, the Western landscape was forever changed. Meanwhile, the new farming and ranching practices became defined politically as improvements to the land in contrast to the previous indigenous way of life. The excuse that Native Americans had failed to improve their ancestral lands then became used as justification for stripping them of land usage, despite the fact that the so-called improvements were causing significant environmental damage. As such, Environmental destruction became inextricably related to the forced removal of Native Americans and the replacement of indigenous practices with the capitalistic cultivation of natural resources. Part 4. Native American Resistance However, this process of Native American removal was not met without resistance. Significant indigenous protest movements can be traced back as far as the 1970s. In one notable protest organized by the American Indian Movement in 1973, about 250 Sioux Indians converged on South Dakota's Pine Ridge Reservation. This occupation highlighted generations of mistreatment of Native tribes by federal and local agencies. A more recent example is the 2011 campaign to stop Phase 4 of the Keystone XL Pipeline in South Dakota, which mobilized masses in opposition to a pipeline that would run through and near tribal lands water resources, and places of spiritual significance. Finally, in 2015, President Obama rejected the Keystone XL pipeline proposal, demonstrating the success of the Indigenous Environmental Network and collaboration between tribes and activist groups. Part 5, hashtag no DAP. The tribal members who participated in the Keystone XL pipeline protest were critical organizers of another pipeline protest that garnered national attention, the Dakota Access Pipeline. The planned construction in 2016 would extend the pipeline from North Dakota through South Dakota and Iowa. 
Construction threatened to contaminate several significant bodies of water and cut across some lands that house ancient Native American burial grounds. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe was particularly at risk as a portion of the pipeline runs on federal land crossing under Lake Oahe, the tribe's primary drinking source. The tribe sued the Army Corps of Engineers in July 2016, kicking off months of protests at the reservation. The activists camped and housed thousands of water protectors while inspiring nationwide attention. In January 2017, the hashtag, hashtag DAPL, was in the top 50 nationwide Twitter trends. Social media built awareness of indigenous land rights, and it also made people from all across the country feel like they could get involved. President Barack Obama was swayed by the activists and directed the Army Corps of Engineers to block construction of the disputed segment of the pipeline. However, President Donald Trump reversed this decision and the pipeline was completed in early 2017. The DAP controversy is still in the news today. Although the $3.8 billion pipeline has been moving oil from North Dakota to Illinois for over three years, a federal judge ordered the operation of the DAP to be halted in early July, calling for a more robust environmental analysis. Even so, environmentalists, tribes, and progressive groups hope that the newly elected Biden administration will deny a new permit and stop this pipeline indefinitely. Part 6. Conclusion Indigenous rights are increasingly becoming a key focus of the environmental justice movement as activists recognize that harmful environmental policies often target and disproportionately affect indigenous communities. These modern threats to indigenous communities have the potential to carry on the colonialist legacy of manifest destiny espoused by Thoreau and Emerson in the 19th century. Addressing the problems of the past and contributing to the intersectional environmentalism is imperative to forging a new, constructive relationship with indigenous communities. It's easy to think that environmental issues of this caliber are helpless and unsolvable. However, efforts can be made on an individual level to ameliorate the problems indigenous communities face. For instance, the Native American Rights Fund is an organization dedicated to providing legal assistance to Native American tribes. If you visit the link displayed, you can make a donation that will go towards the well-being of Native American tribes in need.